Thousands of years ago, prior to recording thoughts on sheets of papyrus, man was believed to pass information on through song, dance, and rhythmic patterns of mnemonics. However, from what may have seemed to be a loss of orality, may have been a development of cognition through the use of tools to record knowledge to be passed down to one another. The modern Chinese scripture is one such invention that enabled a culture to prosper through development and variation over thousands of years. In an analysis on the origins of early Chinese writing, William Boltz explains we can only identify a Chinese civilization from the time of the earliest Paleolithic evidence of the Chinese language around 1200 BC. The first evidence of the Chinese script began during the Shang and Zhu dynasty, as symbols found carved into turtle shells or ox bones, known as the oracle bones. These pictographic symbols were discovered by archaeologists around burial sites of royalty, with evidence leading archaeologists to believe their purpose was for divination. The simplicity of the symbols representing human actions rather than complex thought and the discovery of similar symbols on clay pots prior to baking may also indicate the symbols to have been used as labels. The early form of Chinese scripture, however, went through much change before becoming an integral part of the Asian culture and heritage. While some archaeologists believe the oracle bones began a shift in culture, David Cately, whose analysis of early Chinese writing examines cultural context, provides an alternate view. While orality played a strong role in passing on knowledge of Western culture, Cately believes it was the importance of military record keeping and maintenance of power within the dynasty that led kings and emperors to adopt the practice of inscribing symbols on durable turtle shells and ox bones as a final inscription. These final inscriptions appear to have been copied from earlier versions recorded with brushes and ink on bamboo canvas or silk. While the oracle bones ceased with the end of the Shang dynasty, the Chinese culture continued to prevail. Kings no longer needed to express authority over their subjects as a forecaster of knowledge, using oracle bones as their proof. Reading and writing continued to be kept within nobility and highly regarded within the empire. However, it was through a new form of language that the Chinese culture began to distinguish itself from other surrounding areas. The bronze vessel scripture provided more clarity to a changing language and began to morph pictographs into logographs, where each symbol stood for a word and meaning independently. The early logographic symbols reflected the simplistic actions of the pictographs and begged for complexity to fully express thought. Creating a level of complexity without losing definitive meaning proved to be more difficult of a process than it might have seemed. The sounds in the Chinese language in referring to various objects, actions, and ideas meant there were a significant amount of similarities that existed. Logographs, therefore, began to take on multiple meanings depending on context, known as a rebus use of characters. To aid in the ambiguity that was forming around the logographic homophones, additional symbols were added on to the logograph to bring clarity and complexity to the language. Compound characters provided room for abstraction of thought and reduced the need to use written language for record keeping and labels only. This transformative script became known as Da Xuan, the large seal script. And although the Chinese written language now had a greater purpose within the empire, there was still much to be done in perfecting the written form before it would become the modern Chinese characters known today. During the 8th century BC, while scholars toiled with the semantics and logistics of expressing an entire language of thought, 
through ambiguous logographic symbols. The empire was under a period of transition, known as the Spring and Autumn period. Hundreds of schools of thought struggled to dominate the feudal system of the time. Confucius was one of the many philosophers whose ideas would come to be known throughout the empire and would dominate Chinese culture thanks, in part, to the progression of the Chinese writing system. Education within the Chinese feudal system was held in high regard. If one should be educated, one would have power over the common folk. Speeches, or a remonstrance, were methods of argument for these scholars and the way in which they could impress their teachings on others. Protests led to conflict within the empire, becoming known as the Warring States period. The conflicting scholars needed distinction for their ideas, and in order to further express the abstraction of thought, yet clarify their intentions for political and clerical duties, the script took on a more distinctive, symbolic form moving away from the original pictographic form of late. Despite later efforts from the Emperor Quinn to unify the symbols across the empire using syllables alone, the compound characters of the Da Xuan large seal script remained very much the same, with only subtle differences in brush strokes, as it transitioned to the Shao Xuan small seal script. Clerical script was also created as a distinct font used by administration as politics were being carefully recorded for detail and accuracy. While different regions across China carried subtle differences in the character formations, the Da Xuan followed by the Shao Xuan, and eventually the clerical script known as Li Shu generally remained constant allowing an entire civilization to communicate abstract thought of early philosophical teachings far and wide. Although the Da Xuan was not the end of the invention of the Chinese writing system, if we can even begin to distinguish the Chinese culture formed around the written character as a singular invention in time, the creation of the large seal script provided early Chinese civilization with a method of educating a people across a great land. The symbols created during the 8th century invoked enough interest to inspire other Asian cultures to adapt similar styles of logographic notation to educate their people through literacy. For the Chinese culture, the shift from singular logograms to compound characters representing abstract thought carries with it significant implications in educating children in modern day. With an alphabetic orthography of Western culture, a child's ability to read and write depends largely on their phonological awareness. Children process sounds through listening and are therefore able to link those sounds to letters and phonemes in order to eventually form words with meaning. In the Chinese language, however, Words are tied to symbols with meaning, rather than sound phonemes, as seen through the progression of scripture from pictographs to compound logographic script. Storytelling in early China played a significant role in educating young children in the morals of society and lessons to be learned. While Western cultures tended to use storytelling as entertainment, the importance of stories carrying with them moral values means children often grow up not necessarily associating spoken words with symbols in written language or books. Rather, they learn the written language through visual memory and fine motor skills. Repetition of the basic brush strokes, which are then combined to create thousands of different characters, each with their own meaning, makes the practice of learning the written language very different from Western culture and the alphabetic orthography. That is not to say children do not learn the sounds associated with the symbols. It is simply a matter of learning the written language of characters and brush strokes before learning to read. The complexity of the Chinese writing system as it has evolved from the Da Xuan large seal script 
brings with it both pros and cons to the education system. Historically, the logographic writing system, as opposed to the syllabic writing system proposed by the Emperor Quinn during the Han Dynasty, meant characters underpinned subtle variations within the vast country that could account for different dialects and languages without hindering their meaning. With the development of compound characters, ambiguity was minimized, so abstract thought and philosophical teachings could reach the far corners of the land. Contrarily, however, from an education standpoint, the thousands of characters the language necessitates means there is a great deal of memorization required in order to master the complex written language. Over time, the pictographic origins have been morphed into linear brushstrokes, resembling very little the original imagery. Modern Chinese speakers may not have the ties that were once foundational to the written language, but the brushstrokes that form the characters stem from deep roots within the Chinese civilization, forever adapting with the evolving culture.